Sony says more PlayStation games are coming to PC starting with Days Gone. It will arrive on PC this spring. PC port beggars got a big W now and PlayStation fans have to take this L. No, I don't really think PlayStation fans in general need to take an L on this one, bro, because most PlayStation fans don't really care if more people get to play a video game. It's mainly just a very salty and small portion of the PlayStation community that's upset about this, like yourself, and they're known as fanboys. But what's up, guys? I hope you all are having a great day today. We are going to be taking a look at a fairly interesting YouTube video here, which is titled Days Gone PC Version, PlayStation Exclusives Downfall. Now, this video basically consists of a grown man getting upset the PlayStation is deciding to bring more of their games to the PC platform because, you know, they're a company and they want to make more money. I mean, who would have guessed that one, dude? Sony, a corporation, wants to make more money, bro? It's almost like that's the only reason they exist. But, you know, this video is absolutely pathetic, dude. He's basically begging Sony to make less money because he doesn't want other people to play PlayStation games unless they go out and buy a PlayStation. Like, this is some really pathetic behavior. And I think this is going to be overall a pretty enjoyable video. So I think without further ado, guys, let's go ahead and play this shit. What the hell is Jim Ryan over at PlayStation doing? More and more PlayStation fans are coming out saying that Jim Ryan should be fired and that he is destroying the PlayStation brand. That's right, man. The PlayStation brand, more profitable and popular than ever before, is being ruined by the man who put it in that position. Absolutely, my dude. You are 100% right, but I really want to know who these quote-unquote PlayStation fans are because if they're anything like you, I can see why Sony doesn't give a shit what they have to say. He put Horizon Zero Dawn on PC, censored Japanese games, said that $70 is good pricing for video games, and now he intends to bring many PlayStation games over to other platforms. What's up guys, Drake Salofino here, the PlayStation Hype Man. Bruh, imagine unironically calling yourself the PlayStation Hype Man. That's how you know you can definitely take what this dude is saying, seriously. Subscri <laughs> subscribe by hitting the red button below. Jim Ryan gave an interview recently. He said, We find ourselves now in, uh, in early 2021 with our development studios and the games that they make in better shape than they've ever been before. Particularly from the latter half of the PlayStation 4 cycle, our studios made some wonderful great games. There's an opportunity to expose those great games to a wider audience and recognize the economics of game development. Which is basically corporate speak for we're making a bunch of games that cost a lot of money to make, so we want to make as much money as humanly possible from those games. I know, it's like a huge shocker, dude. Sony wants to make money. Which are not always straightforward. The cost of making games goes up with each circle, as the caliber of the IP has improved. Ryan added, it's easier as well to make PlayStation games available to non-console owners, making it a fairly straightforward decision for us to make. I mean, for very little effort, you can make a lot more money. What company in their right mind would not do that? It'll still, uh, it is still unclear which other PlayStation titles might make the jump to PC. So what do I think about all of this? Well, I think we have a pretty good idea. To be quite honest, I hate it. Wow, what a surprise. To be quite honest, I hate it. Putting PlayStation games on PC is a terrible move, period, because Sony's main argument in the console war resolves around quality exclusive titles. Let me get this straight. Without exclusive games on the PlayStation 5, it is not a compelling purchase. Like, you're saying that most of the value of the PlayStation 5 is found in the fact that you can play games on the PS5 that you can't get anywhere else, not in the piece of hardware itself. So basically what you're saying is the PlayStation 5 is not worth it as a piece of hardware, and you're only buying it because Sony tells you you have to buy it to play play certain video games. Am I getting that right? I mean, dude, I'm just throwing it out here. If that's how you feel, shouldn't you be advocating for more PlayStation games to come to other platforms so then you don't have to buy the PlayStation 5? Which, if I'm getting this correctly, you're saying it's only value, or the majority of its value is derived from the fact that you can only play certain games on it and not the hardware itself. But if you think about it that way, it's almost like you're roasting the console you claim to love so much. And just another fun fact for you, more people are buying a PS5 to play games like Fortnite and Call of Duty than any PlayStation exclusive. Why buy PlayStation when the games are on PC? 
wasn't that the argument for not buying Xbox in the first place. It's really funny how the goalposts change. Like it used to be like, oh, PC gaming is too complicated. I just want a plug and play experience, dude. I just want easy accessibility. I guess that doesn't matter anymore, right? All that matters is the exclusives, bro. Even though like 80 to 90% of people who play on PlayStation don't buy most of the exclusives. Once again, they're buying the console for games like Fortnite, Minecraft, and Call of Duty. I see Xbox guys and PC port beggars being up in arms about this, saying that Sony is a company and they uh, want to make money, saying that Sony doesn't care about us, saying that uh, they will go the X Xbox route, saying that this is the future of gaming. I mean, if that's what they're saying, then they're not wrong, because let's face it, Sony does not give a shit about little fanboys on Twitter and YouTube getting upset over the fact that they want more people to play their video games so they can make an extra couple billion dollars a year. This is where you guys shoot yourselves in the foot, to be honest, man, because, you know, fanboys are a very funny type. You know, they expect these corporations to actually take them seriously and do what they ask them to, but at the same time, regardless of what those companies do, the fan boys still give them money. Like, on what planet would any company take you seriously if you're making these complaints and saying, I don't like this, please don't do this, PlayStation, and then at the end of the day, regardless of what they do, you still pay them. Saying that uh, they're only porting some games uh, that are a couple years old, but to be, uh, to be quite frank here, I still don't like this because it takes away a reason or the reason to go with, to go with the PlayStation brand. Why should the market leader adopt strategies from Xbox, a company that is dead last, trailing far behind Nintendo? I just think it's really funny, bro. Like, most companies, if you ask them, what company would you like to be like? Most would name probably Apple, Google, or Microsoft. Those are like the three shining stars of the business world that every single other company on planet Earth strives to be like and imitate their success. So I find it very funny that, you know, we have somebody saying, like, why would anyone ever want to copy what Microsoft is doing when literally every single company on planet Earth follows the example of companies like Microsoft. But it really just shows you how closed-minded these people are. Like, everything comes down to the console war, dude. How many consoles did this company sell versus the other? That does not matter to a multi-billion or multi-trillion dollar company like Microsoft at this point, bro. They're playing the long game. They want as many people buying and playing their video games as humanly possible. And Sony is starting to realize, you know what? Maybe that's not a bad idea. Why do you think Nintendo is putting a bunch of their IPs on mobile phones, dude. They all want to make money from this shit. Sony's just kind of late to the party. I mean, most of Sony's gaming revenue doesn't even come from PlayStation. It comes from their mobile phone games, which to make it even more funny, aren't even in their gaming division. They're in the music division. So you could argue that Sony's best game developers in terms of profitability aren't even making games for the PlayStation. Sony is chase, uh, chasing after pennies here. Yeah, that's right. Potentially billions of dollars more a year in revenue. Definitely just pennies while making serious dollars why would they change a running system a, a, a great system that has been working for years and decades uh, in a year where they are, they, ha they are having problems meeting the demand for their brand new PlayStation 5 consoles. These consoles are flying off the shelves. They are selling the games. They are selling the consoles. They are making money. They are making money on services. Why would they change anything? Because the sole reason a company like Sony exists is to make as much money as humanly possible and increase shareholder wealth. That is literally the only reason for their entire existence. So if they feel like putting their games on another platform to make more money with very little effort is going to do that, they're going to do it, man. They don't give a shit what the little fanboys on Twitter have to say. I don't understand this. Just in case you guys couldn't tell. I don't understand this. And some might say that they only want to entice PC gamers to come over to the PlayStation camp. But if the PC guys were so interested in, in Days Gone and all of these other games, they would already have gotten that game on PlayStation. Um, not everyone values a video game enough to go out and spend $400 on a console they don't necessarily want just to play one video game. It makes absolutely no sense. When it comes to uh, Horizon Zero Dawn, it was kind of okay because it was just one game. Now they show intent to port big chunks of the library over to the PC. That whole economic uh, argument is also scary to me. Yeah, I'm pretty sure most things that involve any sort of thinking whatsoever probably scare you. This shows that PlayStation also intends on putting other games like newer PlayStation 5 titles on newer other hardware. Who, know, who knows where they are putting it? At least PC, I don't like that. Sony is making so much money with PlayStation at the moment. Why would they change this running system? 
I mean, I'll say it again, bro, because they want to make more money. It's just that simple. This is a situation we have never seen before as PlayStation fans. I'm at the point now where I would turn into a PC gamer if they port games like God of War 2018 over to PC. Because at that point, what's even the reason to go with PlayStation or console gaming in general? It makes no sense whatsoever. Look at Nintendo. Nintendo is doing great at the moment. The Switch is selling at record numbers, even outselling the PlayStation 5 and other uh, Xbox consoles whatsoever. I mean, Nintendo is doing it the right way. Their whole business resolves around exclusive games and their characters. Yeah, and the majority of people who buy a PlayStation are buying it for third-party games like Minecraft, Fortnite, Call of Duty, games like that. It's not a first-party machine. Like, sure, there's a small portion of people that maybe go out and buy a PlayStation for the exclusives, but they are definitely the minority. Or else, you know, PlayStation exclusives would have a similar attach rate to that of Nintendo consoles. Nintendo is kind of in a very unique situation. Nobody's really buying a Switch as a primary console. They're more of just buying it as a way to play Nintendo games. Like, everybody who has a Switch, for the most part, has another gaming platform. Platform because if you only have a Switch, you're missing out on like 90% of the games that release. So most people buying a PlayStation are doing so for third-party games, and most people buying a Switch are doing so for first-party games, and also the portability factor, which I feel like is important to note. So you have two products in almost completely different categories, so I don't really think it's a fair comparison to make. Like, I do not see the PlayStation 5 sales numbers just drastically dropping because all of a sudden you can play PlayStation 5 games on PC. The console gaming market is still going to be there, and the only console that you can play those PlayStation games on is the PlayStation. Look how the Mario 3D All-Stars collection sold. Look how Nintendo fanboys are hyped for ports of like 10-year-old games because they are not available uh, on, uh, on systems that are non-Nintendo. The whole point of Nintendo would be um, it would be basically destroyed or devalued when you take away these exclusives and these characters. Uh, I, I couldn't get a PlayStation 5 because I wasn't able to find it anywhere. Now I'm thinking about building a really high-level gaming rig. I mean, shit, go for it, man. You're definitely going to enjoy it a lot more than a PS5. Um, build a big uh, game collection based on Steam sales. Uh, Steam isn't censoring games. All games get ported to PC. You can get Game Pass on PC. I would just continue collecting games on the Nintendo systems and migrate over to PC as my main dish. This is a scary thing to uh, think about. Yeah, when I think of something truly terrifying, I think of playing video games on PC. Since the PC community is completely toxic to the max. Oh, and you motherfuckers aren't? But you kind of have uh, have to consider these things at, at these uh, times with uh, Jim Ryan at the top. Uh, PlayStation games should be true first-party exclusives and not just timed exclusives. That's right, get rid of all third-party games on the PlayStation as well. See how well the console does after that. They should be on PlayStation and not any other platform, not on PC, nowhere else, for at least 5 to 10 years. That's how I think about it. Yeah, I hope you don't take this the wrong way. Well, actually, I kind of do, but I don't really think thinking is really a strong suit of yours. Uh, one thing I haven't seen come, uh, come up in many threads and discussions is uh, that we know Sony is selling the PlayStation 5 console at a loss and making the money back on software. With these PC ports, they invest a relatively small amount in development and the other uh, cost to them is less uh, incentive to uh, buy their console. They can reduce that cost by releasing the PC ports three to five years later, so potential console shoppers still feel the pull of exclusivity. But Okay, so if a console shopper is going to choose between an Xbox or a PlayStation, why would it matter what games on either platform are on PC? Like, the person already has it in their mind, they're buying a console. So whatever games are on PC from either platform is completely irrelevant. But on the other hand, many of the ported games like Horizon Zero Dawn and Days Gone are barely over two years old. And PlayStation is also starting to drop that only on PlayStation label on their games. It seems like in the early stages that Microsoft is winning this generation in terms of ideology. Yeah, people enjoy playing video games on their preferred platform, who would have fucking guessed? Uh, what PlayStation is doing here is a suicide decision, but money talks louder, I guess. 
they are slowly killing the only single reason to buy a PlayStation. I mean, once again, he's openly admitting that there is literally no reason to buy a PlayStation whatsoever unless you are forced into it because software is only available on that platform. That means not only does he think the PS5 is a waste of money, but it's underpowered in terms of what you're paying for. So, you know, once again, they're roasting the console they're shilling for, so you really love to see it. I'm just hoping that they will not hand over uh, these big guns, these games like God of War, Spider-Man, Uncharted 4, or the Nathan Drake Collection, uh, The Last of Us, The Last of Us 2. Yeah, we'll take all of those, but you know what, I'll do you a favor. You can keep The Last of Us Part 2, alright? You guys really deserve to keep that absolute masterpiece. So keep The Last of Us 2 exclusive to the PlayStation, because you know what, you guys truly earned that one. We don't want to take it away from you. But everything else, like God of War, yeah, give that shit over. Uh, Bloodborne, all of these games over to PC. I'm really scared about this because I think that only PlayStation owners deserve to play these games because these games have been developed by PlayStation. Oh my god, dude. I don't really think companies give a shit who's paying them as long as they're getting the money. Um, this, this is uh, the soul, the heart and soul of PlayStation. So you can't just give away games uh, like this. And I have seen when it comes to Bloodborne, when it comes to God of War, when it comes to Spider-Man, many uh, PC guys begging for these these games, uh, many petitions about these games. This is uh, something that pops up on a regular basis. And if you're a company like Sony that literally sees people on the internet basically begging them to let them give Sony money, why the fuck wouldn't they take it? Like, is this really that hard of a concept to grasp? The PC community is uh, obviously happy about everything that's going on right now. Uh, they have been pork begging for years. I've been laughing about their petitions in my videos and all of that stuff, but they it, it just shows that they were right, maybe waiting for PlayStation games to come over to their platform. These are the kinds of guys, these PC guys, they would never buy a PlayStation. And that's exactly what Microsoft and now Sony have realized. There are certain people out there who play only on PC that have no interest whatsoever in ever going out and buying a console, no matter what games Microsoft and Sony releases. So therefore, they are quite literally losing out on potential millions, if not billions of dollars by not exposing people to those games. And therefore, if the people are never going to go out and buy a console to begin with, it'll have no effect whatsoever on the console sales of that platform because the people buying the games on PC weren't going to buy a console in the first First place. You know, hopefully I've made this easy enough for you to understand, dude. You know, I hope your brain can wrap itself around this idea because it's really not that complicated. I mean, at this point in the video, you are quite literally listing off every single reason for why Microsoft and Sony want to do this, but you're just too stupid to realize it. But they would for sure get the games uh, on a Steam sale for cheap or pirated for free. Uh, that's what they are all about. The gaming uh, industry grew so big in these recent years, it's the most important form of entertainment these days. There's massive revenue and Sony's consoles are flying off the shelves. They're getting a cut of these, uh, these third-party games and DLC. Uh, they are starting to get greedy now, I think. Wait, you're telling me that it took you this long to realize that Sony is a greedy company? God help us. And that's why, why they are facing this whole backlash. Jim Ryan is starting to become a liability for the play, uh, PlayStation brand. You know, I always love it when these console fanboy channels decide to play armchair executive and talk about how much better they could run the company than the current leadership could. Like, bro, if you're that intelligent, go work for the company because, you know, if you have all these wonderful ideas, I'm sure they would love to have you. Uh, you can see that Japanese developers are now uh, starting to turn away from PlayStation, trying to put their games on PC uh, because there is no or barely no censorship. Just look at uh, recent releases like Honey Pop 2. I mean, this is an extreme game, but whatever. We look at this. Um, Jim Ryan is starting to look more and more like Phil Spencer 2.0, and I think that this is horrible. It seems like Sony is now starting to also have a leadership problem here. That's right, the PlayStation brand, more profitable, more popular than ever before. They're definitely having a leadership problem, and they need Drake Celafino on YouTube to fix it. Look at PlayStation VR 2 announcements. Uh, it sounds good, everything is great on paper, but why is there still a cable involved? 
It's a step in the right direction, but it's also a step back. Every high-end VR headset has a cable, because unless you want to have something like the Oculus Quest, where it has the inbuilt processor in the headset where it's very limited, you're going to need a cable to hook it up to the console or computer powering it. I mean, honestly, man, this video is just absolutely pathetic. It's pretty clear you have no idea what you're talking about. Some guys are saying that they only give uh, Days Gone away because it wasn't very successful, but that's just damage control, let's face it. Resident Evil Dawn sold over 10 million copies on PlayStation and also got ported to PC, so, uh, so success isn't a factor for them. I don't see a pattern in all of this and I don't understand the strategy. I can see them also bringing Knack, The Order, and Infinite Second Son over to PC. These old PlayStation 4 launch titles, these games should be very easy to port and they should be running on uh, very low specs gaming PCs or old gaming PCs since these games, they are very old. They are launch PlayStation 4 titles. Uh, I guess that it will even be harder to port PlayStation 3 games over because they have a different architecture, but... Yeah, um, I'm, I don't like the, the idea of any of this. Uh, I want to keep these games to uh, to myself. Trust me, dude, there was never a doubt in anyone's mind who was watching this video that you do not want other people to play your precious PlayStation exclusives, bro. Or to the PlayStation community and not to these other communities. Why should, uh, why should PlayStation cater to all of these other communities? Money. I think they should cater to, play st to the PlayStation community. I didn't have a problem with them porting over Persona 4 Golden to PC since this is just a Vita game and it's also a very old game. Uh, so uh, I even double dipped on that one. Uh, I, have, uh, I have Persona 4 on the PlayStation 2. But uh, yeah, whatever. Um, I think that the so the, the uh, salty Sony fans are right at the moment. I mean, of course you do. You're one of them. Why would you think you're wrong and then proceed to upload a 12 minute long video? They have a point. Uh, I'm a old school gaming fan and this isn't the right direction to take. But what do you guys think about all of this? Leave your thoughts in the comments below and don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button and ring that bell to stay up to date with my most recent gaming content. Other than that, thanks for your support, keep it gaming and have a nice one gentlemen. <laughs> And just like that, the video is over, guys. I guess the key takeaway here is Sony, you just need to make less money, okay? You know what? I don't care if you're a corporation. I don't care if the sole reason you exist is just to milk as much money from people as humanly possible and maximize shareholder wealth. That does not matter to me. What really matters is the poor PlayStation fanboys on YouTube and Twitter that are having to go through a very hard time right now. You know what? Forget making an extra couple billion dollars a year selling games on PC. You guys need to think of your true hardcore fans like Drake Celofino, Crap Gamer, and many others because you know what? They are the core of your fan base. They're the only reason your company is where it is today, not the other 100 million people who actually buy the console and do not give a shit if other people get to play video games. You know, think of the fanboys. They are truly the ones that you should be focused on right now. But anyway, guys, that is gonna do it for this video today. If you did enjoy it, please drop a like on it. I would greatly appreciate it. And you know what? It'd make my day just a little bit better. So, so if you could drop a like on this video, I would greatly appreciate it. But with that said, I wanna thank you guys so much for taking the time out of your day to check out this video and for all the recent support as well. You guys are the fucking best. I really do appreciate it. And I will catch you guys next time.